God's from resting my iPad in your Bible and it feels wrong. Come on back. Thank you so much, are you on? You have coffee out there? I don't know if that's right. Yeah. Maybe it's no, not. Looks like water. That's all right. That's all right. That'll give you energy too. Okay. Fix my migraines, praise God. Come on in. Thank you, are you on? All right, all right. Excellent. The doors are closing. Look at that. This is working very well. Okay. Well, thank you, guys. You have a good morning. Were you able to recover from your flights and your drives? And some of y'all lost flights and your drives. <laughs> Anyone skip breakfast just to get a few extra hours? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. I would have done the same thing. In fact, I debated it myself. You made it not showing up today. But I'm here. Someone's got to run. I didn't see my daughter at all yesterday. So I was like, you know, maybe I'll just come at noon. Uh, but I'm here. All right. Everyone looks like they're in. We're going to go ahead. Daniel, you ready? Danny? Danny says yes. Okay. Who is Josh Moran? Who can say, really? <laughs> I met Josh Moran almost seven years ago at a district director's conference in Houston, Texas. I then discovered that he served as the assistant director to uh, University of Virginia and intern director. A fruitful Chi Alpha with some of the best Chi Alpha culture I've ever seen, which made me very impressed with his spiritual pedigree, and those are big facts. I then discovered that he served UVA for 12 years, which is more than double the average Chi Alpha missionary tenure. This impressed me with his tenure and his grit. Are there people with no grit? Yes, there are, unfortunately. You hate to see it, but Josh Moran's not one of them. Then I discovered he served as the district director for the Potomac for the last six years. If I'm doing the math correctly, that might be outdated. Leading leaders of different generations, which is easier said than done, and he's done it favorably, which has impressed me with his leadership. And then the Moran family decided to pioneer, to lead something already established in order to start something from nothing, which is not easy. That's tough. So to quote Leonard Ravenhill, people ask, where is the God of Elijah? The real question is, where are the Elijahs of God? Josh Graham is an Elijah of God, and I believe after this session, many of you will leave inspired to be an Elijah too. Would you please welcome to the stage the, one of the co-team leaders of James Madison University and the Potomac Crowd District Director, Reverend Josh Moran. <laughs>
Well, Levi is after her. He just turned 10. Uh, he just made the Little League All Star team. Uh, yeah. Levi could also beat every single one of you in golf. Uh, his brother Judah is 7. He has an All Star game tonight uh, in Broadway, the next town over. And then our youngest, Esther Joy, just finished preschool. Very excited for kindergarten in the fall. We are also very excited for kindergarten in the fall because it means that we will have three kids at the exact same school. We'll only have two drop offs next year. Woo! Our next picture is my small group. Uh, nope, sorry, we'll start there. Yeah, that's not my small group. That's a very small group. Uh, this is this is JMU Powell about three years ago. Okay, 2019, this is what we started with. Jack Estep, uh, Paula Noble. That was all that Kyle was. Okay, then I got a picture of my small group next. Nope, sorry, that's not my small group again. Do I have a picture? Yeah, there we are. That's us playing flag football. Uh, I played intramural sports with my small group this past semester. Uh, we played Thursday nights at 10 p.m. Uh, I'll tell you this, my 37th birthday is tomorrow. Literally none of you have an excuse for why you can't hang out with college students late at night, okay? You know what my body feels like every morning after playing intramural sports with those guys, okay? We finished in the top eight of the university, super proud of that, so that's why I put a picture up there. And then the next picture you saw is a picture from our beach week this, uh, this past May. This is where Giant Gaby Palpa is just a part of our leadership team right now. The Lord is doing great things. I believe pioneering is the most fun you can ever have. And so you all need to consider it and think about it for the future. But anyway, let's get into our session this morning. Our session today, we've learned some great leadership lessons. And right now, our session is called Leaders Lose Rights. <laughs> oh, yes. I hope that you are ready. We're going to talk about the leadership rights triangle. What you're going to see on this triangle is that as you move up the rank of leadership, your rights go down. The higher up the leadership you go, the less rights you have over yourself, over your time, over your future, because you have given up those rights as you have moved up the leadership triangle. Okay, this is going to be a good lesson for you. You felt it as you now look back on your last four years. You're like, wait a minute, I was so pursued when I was a freshman, but then when I became a small group leader, I lost some of my rights. Now, as you transition from small group leader to intern, as some of you are transitioning from intern into uh, full-time staff, you are going to lose more and more rights. So we're going to talk about some of those rights. And to do that, we're going to look at the Bible. If you have your Bible, you can turn to John chapter 3. I'll be reading from... Verse 22 and on. It says, After this, Jesus and his disciples went out to the Judean countryside where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now John was also baptizing at Anon near Salim because there was plenty of water, which makes sense, right? It's a good place to baptize. Some of you have tried to baptize people on campuses where there's not enough water and you have to do the double dunk just to make sure. You all laugh because you can relate. And people were coming and being baptized. I love this aside that John gives us here. This was before John was put in prison. Duh. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, look, he is baptizing and everyone is going to him. John! They're going to eventually call you John the Baptist. Like, baptism is your thing. This is what you do. This is our livelihood. This is the whole thing that we've had. Now there's another guy, and he's doing it. What should we do? And I think John's response in these next few verses is why Jesus says, of those born of women, there was no one greater than John. To this, John replied, a person can only receive what is given them from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said I am not the Messiah, but I am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. That joy is mine. And it is now complete. He must become greater and I must become less. 
This is how the leadership triangle works. He must become greater in that you must become less. So let's talk about some of those rights that you're going to have to give up as you move up the leadership triangle in your internship lives. The first one is you have the right to have it your way. This ain't Burger King. This is the kingdom of God. Okay, it is no longer about you. As a matter of fact, it probably hasn't been about you in a very long time. That, that the way that you think things should go, your preferences, your desires are not what it is about anymore. The sermon series is not geared towards you anymore. The social event is not about what your preference is. You no longer have the right to have it your own way. Philippians 2 says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility. Value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. The pastor or staff that you are going to serve under have given their lives to your university. It is not about you. But hey, if you want it to be all about you, if you want the kingdom to be about you and your preferences and your values, yeah, you can have it your way. You're just not a leader. Move back down the triangle. Next, you have the right to pout and complain. Woo! <laughs> you have the right to be a rogue leader and take the fellowship down with you. Too many times I am sick and tired of people who are frustrated and they pout and complain to their small group and they start a lineage of pouting and complaining all down throughout the ministry. I can look, I can see people's faces and I can watch the lineage play out as they disciple that, because you disciple who you are, not always just what you say, into their small group as they pout and complain about everything that doesn't go at their you may not want to lead the small group you've been assigned. You may not want to meet with a mentor that has been assigned to you. You do not have the right to pout and complain about those things. The social event will always be the time that you want. The sermon series will always be about you. But the way that you respond to those things, is the gossip really worth it? What are we trying to do there? Win people to ourselves? Be liked? We voice things as prayer requests when they're actually just frustrations? Hey, Storm, can you guys pray for me? I just had a really hard time with staff meeting today because I tried to say that you guys shouldn't have to be there early, but the staff said you should be there early. <laughs> you guys are laughing, but these are real stories. I'm not making this up. But look, hey, if you want the right to pout and complain, you want to gossip amongst your friends and air your grievances, we call that Festivus, for you to be signed up friends out there, you have that right. Just move back down the triangle. But hey, if you want to break confidence from what happened in a staff meeting, you have that right. Just pack your bags and go home. Literally have no time. This is fun, right? <laughs> the next one is that you have the right to have complete control over your schedule. Right? I'm, I'm almost 37 years old and I play basketball on Friday nights till too late. Intergirls start at 10 p.m. and then my kids get up like Judah, the last few mornings, has been really excited because he's woken up in the 5 o'clock hour. I'm like, bruh, this has got to stop. People are going to call you. Students are going to want your time. They're going to want your time late at night. They're going to want your time not as much early in the morning unless you're at UVA, right? But this is what life is going to be like. You do not have the right to control your own schedule anymore. You are going to have to attend district and national Kyle events because that's what it means to be these things of God. Okay? CMC is this summer. 
we're all going to be there. Okay? When it gets time for breakaway, when it's time for salt, when it's time for your regional conferences, you have to attend them. District council, ministers retreat, these are things that God Alpha has to be about because you have given up the right to have control over your schedule. I don't care when it happens in your calendar. You have to be there. General counsel is at a, at a frustrating time for, for campus ministries, but you still have to be there. Are you a part of this global movement or not? Or do you just want to be your own thing in control of your own schedules? You've given up that right. You can't competitively program with your local Chi Alpha. Okay? You can't take your small group and go do something else when a, when a social event is happening that night because you have given up the right to have control of your schedule. And when things are planned, you have to be there. You have to do the reading that you've been assigned this year. You're going to have to work that into your calendar. I don't care how. Do it. CrossFit, if you're in Arkansas, is going to be early in the morning. You have to go. And if you didn't want to go to that, you should have gone to an internship in the Northeast. <laughs> My fourth year of college... For some reason, I had been a small group leader for two years already. It's still unclear to me. I think we were just taking volunteers back then. <laughs> My fourth year of college, I'm, I'm leading a small group that year. And uh, leadership retreat is coming up. You know, it's the high point of the year. It's like a big moment of vision and gathering back together. And I decided I wasn't going to go to it. And uh, my campus pastor Pete calls me and goes, hey, I saw you have registered for leadership retreat. Oh, yeah, I'm not going. I'm, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, there's a big uh, state softball tournament. He said, do you mean like, like bright yellow ball, like six to ten foot arc softball? I was like, yeah, I can't hit an over eight curveball anymore, so this is what I've got left, Pastor. It's a big state tournament, it's double elimination, down in Covington. I'm going to go to that. I'm not going to leadership retreat. I've already heard it before. He said, well, you know, like you're leading with a, with a guy that hasn't led before, and so, like, it'd be good for you to be there. Like, and I'm like, you know, I'm just not coming. I didn't go. I went to the softball tournament. We lost the first two games and we're out. That was tough. Um... <laughs> And then my small group failed that year. And I'm not saying my small group failed because I didn't go to leadership retreat because I wasn't at that weekend. I'm telling you my small group failed because of my heart posture. Because the way that I approached the whole thing, again, it was about me. Okay? If you ever find yourself saying, I deserve, you need to be very careful about what comes out of your mouth next. Because it's actually death held in the grave. You have given up the right to have complete control over your schedule. But hey, you want it to be all about you, your preferences, your time schedule? You want to spend time with those friends that you made along the way? And that's who you want to focus your time on? You can do that. Move back down the triangle. You're not a leader anymore. Next, you have the right to break the rules. What leaders do in moderation, followers do in excess. This is not so much a biblical principle as it's one that is based on years of living on the college campus. What you do in moderation, your followers will do in excess. But look, I can hear you now. You have freedom in Christ. You don't relate to God through rules. Shut up. <laughs> Follow the rules. Do what you're supposed to do. Do what you said that you would do, what you agreed to do from the beginning. You knew what you were getting yourself into. It's not a surprise. Follow the rules. First Corinthians 8 is a good place for you to look at. It's about the weaker brother principle. The weaker brother, the weaker sister that, how dare you weaken their conscience for your own freedom. Think about how you embrace culture, what TV shows you watch, what music you listen to, where you go, when you go there, and what you post on the internet. Oh, man. 
It'd be wild in what you guys post on the internet. What you do in moderation, your followers will do in excess. But hey, if you want to just embrace that freedom, do whatever you want, whatever you want, you can do that. Just move back down the track. All right, you have the right to, to look the other way. Matthew 18, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. What? I thought if your brother or sister sins, go and tell everyone else you know. That's not what Go and talk to them just between the two of you? Oh. If they still refuse to listen, tell them to the church. If they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. You are going to see things. You are going to be living at the student level more than some of your pastoral staff, and you are going to see things that happen, and that you are responsible for that information. You are responsible for what you call students to. You are responsible for what you have seen and what you have heard in order to see the kingdom move forward in that student's life. And that you must say something. We call it care fronting. You need to care more about their future than you do about their feelings. And if you are excited about the conversation, you're probably not ready to have it. We emphasize the care in care fronting. Let me tell you a story. I was, we'll say it's my second year of college, because I'm pretentious. Um, so I don't do freshman, sophomore, I just do first and second year. And I'm living with a guy that we'll call him Anthony Saladino, because that's his name. Um, and uh, he lives down the hall, he's on staff, I live down the hall from him. Anthony comes down and knocks on my door, I open the door, hey Anthony, he goes, hey man. I'm just been in prayer, and I've uh, been praying about who the Lord would have me give this book to. And the Lord put you on my heart. Well, it's the book. He pulls it out from behind. It's Andrew Murray's Humility. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are like, you should probably read that again. <laughs> I'm deeply thankful that Anthony had the, the willingness to get over the social uncomfortableness and hand me that book. That he cared about my, more about my future than he did about my feelings, and he knew that there was something inside of me that could get rooted out in order to see more happen. We have to push through those awkward moments and believe what is best for our students and what we have seen and what we can call them to. I didn't even know pornography was wrong until my smarter leader told me. How are they supposed to know? It's all culture does. Right? If, if all they have seen is, is what culture is doing all around them, we have to be willing to speak with them, to talk to them, to tell them, to show them a different way. You have given up the right to look the other way. But hey, if you want to avoid awkward moments and not challenge people to step into what God would have for them, that's fine. You're just not a leader. Move back down the triangle. Next, you have the right to not go first. You must be the initiator in all situations. You must lead in vulnerability. You must lead in confession. You must lead in worship. You should be the ones on the front row raising your hands if you want to see students raise their hands. The fellowship will not burn any hotter than what you burn individually. You must set the tone, you must set the temperature, and you must lead in all situations. You don't know how I built that small group? Initiating. It's as easy as this. Let me give you a, a pointer on how to build a small group with initiation. When you see someone, ask them the most common question on the college campus. What year are you? Because what do they always respond with after they've told you what year they are? What year are you? And you know what I say? I am 37 years old. I put four kids to bed before I came here. 
And then you know what they say? Why are you here? And then I say, I want to be your pastor. Okay, that's how I do it. <laughs> and then, then it gets really weird because I say, can I have the snack? And they're like, no. <laughs> Can I instant DM you? <laughs> no. Okay, just give me your phone number. Okay. Okay. And so ask them what year they are, but you have to go first. When you meet someone, they are not going to ask you, can I join your small group? Smile at them. Meet them. Go out of your way to initiate. You must make your own work. Do not make your internship director tell you to be on campus. Do not make your internship director tell you to meet students. Why are you even here if you don't want to meet students? Okay? But hey, if you don't want to initiate, you just want things to come to you? Yeah, they're right. Move back down the triangle. Next, you have the right to compare your fruit to other people's fruit. Comparison is the thief of joy. Look, you're in a big RUI class right now. You see a bunch of friends around you. They're going to go out and do some amazing things. And if you find yourself in the comparison circle, where you're always looking at their newsletters, you're always looking at their Facebook groups, you're always looking at their Instagram pictures, like, like wow, they have really got it going on. It will steal the joy that you have in ministry. Comparison will be the thief of your joy. John chapter 21 as Jesus is kind of reinstating Peter, he's telling all these things that are going to happen to Peter. Peter says, well, hey, but like, what, what about John? What's going to happen to John? And Jesus looks at him and says, what is it to you what happens to John? What is it to you how successful your friend's ministries are? What is it to you that the other small group is prettier, cooler, or more athletic? Grow where you are planted. Be faithful with what is before you, and do not compare your situation to other situations. Next, you have the right to not finish the race. 2 Timothy 4, 6-8 says, I'm being already being poured out like a drink offering at the time of my departure is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, the Lord, the righteous judge, reward to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to those who have longed for his appearing. Second Kings 13.14 says, Now Elisha had been suffering from the illness from which he died. And then the next chapter continues as Elisha continues to do the work. You have given up the right to not finish the race. Carry the baton as far as you possibly can. Do not check out after spring break. Do not check out at Christmas break. Finish the race. Continue to go. As you continue your life in Pi Alpha, finish the race. We cannot continue to have the average day in Pi Alpha be less than five years. Finish the race. If we're going to see this great awakening happen, you're going to have to stay in the race. Okay, I looked at my RUI picture yesterday. Most of them are not still in the race. Some of them are. Some of them kind of are. Finish the race. And finally, you have given up the right to neglect your own spiritual law. Ministry works best out of an overflow. In order to be able to set the tone and temperature, in order to be able to understand what is going on, in order, in order to be able to see fruitful ministry happen, you must abide. You must Sabbath. You must know Jesus in order for him to be known on your campus. Jason Bell once said, a real devotional life solves 10,000 temporal problems that we must seek the Lord's heart and not just his hand. Here's what I know in my own life. If my kids wake me up in the morning, I have lost the day. 
I've lost the day because I didn't get to spend time with Jesus before they got up. Because they are constantly there. You are going to have to put time in your schedule to continually, constantly, extravagantly abide with Jesus. You must know Him. If you leave this conference and don't double down on your devotion to Jesus, we've done it wrong. Know Jesus. Continue to know him. Go deep with the Lord Jesus Christ. What I can tell you is that this is actually the most fun part of ministry. To do it out of an overflow. How beautiful was it that that Pastor Clay, as he shared with us, like, I just often just share what I read that morning. Like, how powerful it is to be that deep with Jesus, to continually have something that you can share because of what the Lord has done in you that day. Get your manna every day. Know Jesus Christ. Okay. You want to try to do this on your own? Out of your own strength? Not only are you not a leader, you're crazy. (laughs) I've got nothing for you. Thank you. Thank you, R.E.I. Let's go ahead and take an eight-minute break. We'll be back in for the next session. Love you guys. That was a good one. That was a good one.